Hey everyone, I just got back from my ortho certification. Um, <sighs> Let's just say I didn't sleep for um, a long time. Uh, so that being said, yeah, that being said, I had to bring um, some instruments with me and some goodies on my trip. So I'm gonna show you guys since, well, I have the chance of what these instruments are and um, kind of like a setup for certain things. So um, I'm gonna go over the instruments and then I'll go over some basic orthodontic tray setups. Okay, so these are no specific order. They are just basically, I'm just gonna show you them and what we call them. So this is a scaler. This is the working end, this is the broken end. <laughs> so don't look at this, this end is broken, um, but this is the part that we use. Now with this, you can move to, and these are all clean, you can move debris from the tooth, and I can get my little muscle. As an example, okay. So you could use it to remove any stuff. You can't go up where the hygienist and dentist can, but if you're an assist, you can move stuff. With our self-ligating doors, we use it to open the doors. Well, it's gonna be kind of hard to show you on a type of dot, but we use it to open the doors. Bam, just like that. So the scaler can be used for multiple functions. It can also be used to move um, any type of bands. Next on my list is a bite stick. This is used to see molar bands. It looks like that. It has bite marks in it. It's used, but it has um, been ran through the ultrasonic. And, and ultrasonic and I can't even think of the other thing right now. I'm, like I'm telling you guys, I haven't slept for like 19 hours. Um, so what this is for is used to seat the band. So the patient will bite down on it and it will seat the molar bands. Not everyone gets an expander or any type of um, band during orthodontic treatment, even if it's just a band to help um, that one tooth with its crown and that bracket and stain will normally cement the band and we'll use this. This is a wire or ligature director, whatever you want to call it. This end, I haven't really used this end, but this end we use the most. So this helps direct the wire or ligature tie and it has two little grooves on each of those ends. And this is like the holy grail. These are one of the best ones that we could own. Next thing is um, an explorer, just one end to this. This, you, you could use the same thing as, um, as a scaler. Guys, I'm so sorry, I'm so tired today. You can use the same thing as a scaler, but um, I use mostly just this to remove um, all of the elastomeric ties. You're not going to remove it like this when it's in your patient's mouth, but basically I use that to remove and get underneath something that this baby won't be able to fit under. Because as you can tell, this one's a lot thinner than this one. So that's it for those. Um, and then my next pack. So my next pack are um, ligature cutters. I normally hold my stuff like this, get a good grasp on those. This is to use to cut basically um, not major wires, but used to cut ligature ties like this one. So it'll use, so you see the little, it'll be used to cut that. Cut and tuck is what I say. Just like that. Now when I do use this, I make sure whatever I cut with this and something else I will show you next, I put it and I actually see it before I take it out of the patient's mouth. That being said, this is a distal end cutter. I also hold it the same way, just like if I was to try to cut my own braces. With this, pretend this is the patient's mouth. I'm gonna go in like this. You're not gonna go in like this because you're gonna go in down, down their throat. So you're gonna go in towards the bracket go as much as you can towards the bracket and just cut obviously it's harder to show you when it's not in an actual person's mouth 
But like I said, if you cut in a wire, and I'll show you on one of the other wires, you make sure the wire is attached to this distal end cutter. If not, and if it's in the patient's mouth, you can't see it, get a dentist or an orthodontist. Because the patient can literally choke on that. Um, but yes, distal end cutter. These are hemostats. You've probably seen these everywhere. Not even, doesn't even have to be dental. Everyone has knows about hemostats. Um, you can use these to put on elastomeric ties. I don't. I use these for stuff, um, other stuff, really. I don't use these daily, actually. Um, so yeah. These intimidate a lot of people. These are separating pliers. I hold it like this. If it's going mandibular, I hold that. And up, I hold it up. So it's going to be in this form basically a U for the upper, and I call that an L for the lower. So this is for any type of separators that can be attached to this. Now I only have these instruments until tomorrow, so if you want me to show you anything in specific, please let me know. Again, I only have them until tomorrow. Um, I have to take them back to work on Monday to be sanitized, sterilized, and all that good stuff. Okay. Um, I will show you the molar bands really quick. I'm not going to take them out. I'm going to keep them in a, in a little sterile bag so I can just throw this right in the ultrasonic, not the ultrasonic, autoclave. That's the word I've been trying to think. These are molar bands. This bad boy is what I was showing you that the patients bite down on. These fit around the molars, mostly the molars. The patient will bite down around the band, seating the band and making sure that band is seated good. And these are the bands, molar bands. Next thing I'm not going to open because I did not need them um, are wires. There's pre-cut wires. There's so many different kind of wires. Wires just don't come in packages. They can come in spools, but this is um, um, a wire right here. Another wire, Denver and Company. Another wire. 1925 1925 so many different wires so many different types as you can tell this is a round wire very very thin and flexible and then you'll go into let me see for an example a stainless steel wire which is flat and rectangular and harder to bend so those are the wires so many other type of wires and then there's another one this is, um, we don't use these, so normally it's, I could look at them fast, but this is another one, very hard to bend. Um, the thinner wires we use in the beginning of treatment. There's a few other instruments that I am going to show you guys, and then I'm going to get into some of the other things. Okay, this is a howl plier. Um, you can call it a wine guard, people call it different things. This is used for many things, but mostly um, wires, putting the wires in the bracket tubes, taking them out, doing all that fun stuff. So that's that. Band remover band. This is to basically remove the bands. Simple, very simple. It could either have um, a it could, it could either have, it's so like so many. These little bumpers are replaceable. You could have plastic, it could have ceramic, so many different things. But pretend there, this is the band. This end is gonna go on the occlusal surface and you're gonna remove the band just like that. I'm not gonna do too hard to move um, the bracket. I don't wanna do that, but yes. This is a bird beak. I have not used one of these. Normally the doctors will use one of these, so we're not gonna get too much into detail, but that is a bird beak. This is what I was talking about. Um, a mathow plier versus a hemostat. I don't like these unless I need to use them, um, but I normally use these because it has that spring back. So yeah. This is basically to put on any um, elastomeric ties. You could use it to use to do um, power chain. You could use it to direct literally um, 
anything when it comes to placing stuff around the brackets. This is um, a go-to for me. So that was a lot of instruments that I use daily. And again, it's, it's a lot. And then, okay, to seat the bands, and I don't have a lot of stuff with me. This is just stuff that I needed for the certification, but ended up not needing. This is Banth Lock. This basically is this blue material that goes into the bands when the bands are dry. I seat the bands and a whole bunch of other fun stuff. But this is basically like a um, cement glue that of course has fluoride in it. Most dental stuff that's gonna be in the mouth and in the tooth for a few months, two years, is gonna have fluoral fluoride in it. Okay, next few things. I have two retainer hollies. These were gonna go into the trash, so I figured um, why not just have them for examples. This is an upper and this is the lower holly. The difference is obviously one's for the top, one's for the bottom. And another big difference is the upper has a palette and then the lower does not. And um, it's a very big difference. So I have those retainers. I have elastomeric ties. Since you guys as an orthodontic assistant will probably use these every single day with every single patient unless they're Invisalign. Last thing on my list are separators. Um, these are the main separators we use. I have not placed an actual metal separator or any type of stainless steel separator yet. So just ma mainly these and thicker, bigger ones if the patient has a lot of space. So guys, that is it for my list. That is all of my stuff that I have for you. Um, again, if you want to see any of the things that I, I showed you today. I know I ran through a lot and it's like a whole bunch of mumbling. I just got back from my tr business trip. So super tired, but I'd figured I'd get a video up since I had this stuff, might as well. But yes, let me know if there's anything that you saw you want me to go into detail of, and I will. Again, I have these instruments until Sunday tomorrow. So let me know. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.